Hello friends, how are you? I hope you all are okay. So in the previous lecture, I discussed about what is labor and what are its causes. So in today's lecture, I will discuss about the physiology of labor. So the physiology of labor consists of two terms that is uterine contraction and uterine retraction so under the physiology of labor we will discuss the two terms that is uterine contraction and uterine retraction so first of all the uterine contraction The uterine contraction has a wide variation in tonus, intensity, duration and frequency. So, through the labor, sorry, throughout the pregnancy, means after six weeks of gestation, there are certain contractions which are known as Braxton Hicks contractions. These are start occurring so Brexton Hick contractions are those which are occurring throughout the pregnancy. So the characteristics of these contractions are these are painless means it does not cause any discomfort to women and these are involuntary spasmodic in nature so the meaning of spasmodic is also the involuntary contractions in the muscles and next it does not cause any dilatation of cervix it is irregular in nature but when there is an onset of labor the characteristics of these contractions changes as it become painful causes the dilatation of cervix and become regular or comes at regular intervals so here just we discussed about the type of uterine contraction that is Braxton Hicks contraction which changes into true labor pains during the onset of labor and next we discussed about the pacemaker which is present in the uterus and the exact location is tubal ostia tubal ostia is actually present near the opening of 
फिलोपियन ट्यूब So I'm just drawing a rough diagram. So these are the starting point of the fallopian tube. So tubal ostia is present somewhere here near the opening of the fallopian tube. So it is the exact place where the pacemaker situated. So the pacemaker actually sends the contraction waves downward towards the lower segment so pacemaker is actually considered as a device which helps to regulate the contractions in the myometrium so how actually contractions work or how the contraction waves moves downwards so the contraction waves are actually good synchronization and the meaning of synchronization is as we know that there are two pacemaker one on this side and one on this side so the contraction waves send from both sides of the uterus that is from the both half of the uterus and when the contraction waves send it is sent at the same time with the same intensity that is known as synchronization means there is a good coordination between the contraction waves from both sides it originates at the same time with same intensity that is known as good synchronization and next point is fundal dominance so here when the contraction started from the fundal part when it moves downward it starts diminishing means the contractions are more in the fundal region that is more in the upper segment as compared to the lower segment and it takes 10 to 20 seconds to spread downwards that is to the lower segment the contraction waves are more in the fundal area and it stays or remain more longer as compared to the lower segment and these waves start diminishing or become less effective in the lower segment and next is during contractions the intra amniotic pressure is rise above 20 mm of h stream and during relaxation or the intervals between the contractions the intra amniotic pressure becomes less than 8 mm of H3. So intra-amniotic pressure is the pressure of amniotic fluid in the amniotic sac. So we discussed that how the contractions actually work and now we will move towards the that what actually contractions do. So first of all, uterine contractions causes hardness. That is the uterus become hard. And next is it causes pain which is usually present at the hypogastric region which radiates to thighs. So hypogastric region is mainly the region below the umbilicus. 
so what next is what are the causes of pain it causes myometrial hypoxia same in like angina for example angina like when the contraction occurs the blood vessels occluded and it stops the blood supply to the middle layer of uterus that is myometrium so it leads to hypoxia which in turn results in pain as same in angina that pain in heart occur when there is no blood supply to the muscles of heart next cause of pain is distension or the stretching of cervix means dilatation of cervix also leads to pain that is the pain which radiates towards backward through the sacral plexus sacral plexus is basically the motor and sensory supply to the posterior of the thighs and lower legs and next we will just discuss about these points one by one that is tonus intensity duration and frequency of uterine contractions so the first one is tonus it is basically the intrauterine pressure that is the pressure inside the uterus in between the contractions so tonus word actually deals with the tone that is the smooth muscle tone so during pregnancy when the uterus is inactive when there is no contractions there is contractions that is brexton hick contractions but those are painless and those are irregular at interval so during pregnancy when the uterus remains inactive the tonus is 2 to 3 mm of h t but as the pregnancy advances that is in the first stage of labor the tonus is varies from 8 to 10 mm of h t so the factors which affecting the tonus or the tone of muscles first one is contractility of uterine muscles if the contraction is more in the uterine muscles like this is a normal muscle and this is contracted okay this is relaxed one and this is contracted and this muscle has high tone or has it is highly tonus okay the next one is intra abdominal pressure and next one is over distension due to twin pregnancy or poly hydro news cases like fear view the amniotic fluid is more than its normal quantity which leads to the over distension of uterus so after tonus next one is the intensity of uterine contractions so it refers to 
the degree of uterine systole means how much or the amount of uterine contractions that whether they are strong contractions or less strong contractions that refers to the intensity so during the first stage of labor the intensity of uterine contraction leads to increase in intrauterine pressure which is noted as 40 to 50 mm h mm of hg which is normal and during second stage of labor the intensity of uterine contraction increases the intrauterine pressure to 100 to 120 mm of hg which is maximum in the second stage of labor during the expulsion of fetus so after tonus and intensity the third point is duration that is the duration of uterine contractions so in the early stage of labor the duration of uterine contractions is 30 seconds and it usually or it gradually increases with the advancement of labor like its duration is increases during further stages of labor like in first stage and then it, it increases more in the second stage and next point is after duration next one is frequency frequency means how many times the uterine contractions occurs so in the early stages in the early stage of labor the uterine contractions the single uterine contraction occur after 10 to 15 minutes and the frequency is increases as the labor advances like in second stage of labor the frequency or the frequency of uterine contraction increases as the uterine contractions repeated itself after two to three minutes so that's all about the uterine contractions now our second term under the physiology of labor is retraction so the meaning of retraction is the permanent shortening of muscle fibers so the meaning of contractions is the temporary shortening of muscle fibers but in retraction there is a permanent shortening of muscle fibers so how the retraction helps to continue the labor that is the functions of retraction or you can say first of all retraction helps in expulsion of fetus and the next one is it helps in detachment or the separation of placenta in third stage of labor and 
it also helps to maintain the hemostasis after the expulsion of placenta in the third stage of labor so how retraction helps in the expulsion of fetus so the meaning of retraction is the permanent shortening of the muscle fibers during labor like when the cervix is dilated when the fetus is going to born then the muscle fibers at the upper segment is retracted means here when the baby descend downward means when the baby moves towards the outer world the muscle fibers at the upper segment start retracting because there is a chances when the contraction stops the fetus may push backward by the cervix so in order to prevent it the mus muscle fibers undergoes through retraction that there is a permanent shortening of these muscles so that even if the contraction stops the baby do not comes back okay so here i'll explain how retraction helps in the expulsion of fetus like when fetus moves towards the cervix there is a chances that fetus can pushes backward by the cervix during the relaxation period that is the interval between the contractions so the muscle fibers at the upper segment is retracted that is they permanently shortened so that there is no any chance that baby can pushed backward by the cervix so this is how it helps in the expulsion of fetus and next is uh, that it helps in the detention uh, sorry separation of the placenta so when the muscles become permanently shortened this attached placenta is automatically start separating so it also helps in hemostasis like when the muscles contracted permanently it block the open blood vessels so that to prevent the blood loss so this is how retraction works so that's all about the physiology of labor in this we discussed about the two terms that is uterine contractions and uterine retractions so if there is any kind of query you can ask me in the comment section so if you find this video understandable and effective useful then please like the video and subscribe my channel thank you and have a nice day